Between the many objects in machine learning, features are especially important. So features are things that we can measure. Suppose we are trying to classify rabbits, then we will look at rabbits and try to find measurable parts of the rabbit. For example, the length of the years, or the age in months, or the quantity of carrots per day. Thanks to that, or rabbit has been replaced by a vector, a list of numbers, one number for each of the features. So this task is the first task the machine learning expert will do, which is collect the different features that you can actually measure on whatever you are trying to model. We also find a way of um, finding numbers associated to the features, and these are put into vectors, which are mathematical objects that computers are very good at crunching. Thanks to the features, we can now take our data and enter it into databases. A database can be seen as a table or a spreadsheet where the lines correspond to the examples and the columns correspond to the features. So of course, not all the features weigh the same. Some features may be much more important to solve a question than others. We could think of the humans adjusting the values of these features, and this is how artificial intelligence worked a long time ago. But today, it is the machine learning algorithm which is going to compute the different weights associated to the features. Some features can even have negative weights. So there is a question there. Perhaps we have chosen the wrong features. We could have some features that are completely meaningless, or which is worse, we could have some features which introduce bias. Again, we will rely on algorithms to detect features who are correlated with bias issues, with gender, for example, or we will also use algorithms to detect those features that can be dropped. We don't need them to make the problem simpler and therefore to avoid overfitting. Uh, we can also use algorithms to build combinations of features and then again have a better set problem. But even then, we may think perhaps we still don't have the right features. Perhaps we had to measure something completely different. And the most modern approaches called deep learning will build upon that idea. They will think, well, why don't the features be themselves discovered by an algorithm. The algorithm just will take some raw data. In the case of the rabbit there, we just take the set of pixels, so the image itself, and upon this image, we'll build the features that it will need in the machine's language to be able to perform the task of machine learning that it is um, wanting to do. There is a problem with that. As we can see in this example, we have got some numbers associated with this rabbit. The number 17, the number minus 33, and the number 12. But really, as humans, we don't really know if those numbers mean something. And if those numbers are those that are making a decision and, for example, decide that this rabbit is allowed to go free or is cooked next week, then somehow we would like the system to make intelligible decisions and us to understand on what basis the decisions are made. So this means that there are new problems which are now on the table with deep learning, which correspond to understanding why the decisions based on deep learning algorithms have been made. What's in it for the teacher? What are the questions the teacher should raise at this point? The first one is that the decisions made by a system which is based on models of the type we have seen, the decisions can be 100%, they can be yes, no, or they can be percentages with errors. Understanding this is important. It is going to be important to be able to say to a pupil, my system has said that you are 80% okay in mathematics. What does this mean? 
what do the 20% absent there mean? Understanding these numbers is going to prove important. The second thing which goes with it is that these numbers are often probabilities. And being able to interpret the probability is going to be crucial in the future. Is it a probability of error? Is it a probability of being generated? Is it a probability of being part of a group? Understanding this is going to be important because a lot of the machine learning and artificial intelligence recommendations are going to arrive to us with an associated probability. And related with the features, there is a question. What are the features that have intervened in the decision that I, as a teacher, will have to make based on perhaps the recommendation that has been given to me by the model? On what basis, therefore, on what features has the decision been taken? And this is important when we are thinking of pupils. The decision could be involving the gender, could be involving the city in which the pupil comes from. So we should have a clear transparency on the AI systems we use by looking at the features that are being used by the machine learning systems.